Welcome to Furious Fiction. My name is Jules Graham and with me is Mark Mustion and today we are discussing the one-way bridge. We're discussing the one-way bridge. We have Kathy Pelletier here with us all the way from Maine, right Kathy? All the way from northern Maine. Northern which is Maine. The other Maine. And, and, no ocean. And, and that's where the book is set, the one-way bridge. And, I, and I, I think that you started writing this book a long, long time ago, if I read correctly. You started in 1991, first draft in 2005. Uh, so congratulations, and you've written a lot of other books too. Uh, but, I have, yeah. I mean, did it help coming back to Maine to finish this or? Um... Um, no, I would prefer never to be in Northern Maine when I'm writing a Madagash book, which is set in Northern Maine. Uh, so what I really did is I actually edited and cut about 300 and some pages out of the last draft that I had when I got back here. But otherwise, the book was written in Tennessee and in the eastern townships of Quebec, where I was living at that time. It's just not good to look around. I don't want to look around and be influenced by anything that I see. I want to remember my childhood and, and let the characters form what they want to do and say. Well, at the same time, when you read it, that's exactly how it seems, that you are just looking around because your descriptions are so accurate, the imagery is so clear to me. I could picture the bridge, I could picture, I, thanks for the map in the front of the book. I used it all the time, surprisingly. <laughs> it was just nice because there were so many parts of the storyline that followed the road along. And your characters, um, I was very sympathetic with all of them, except for one, <laughs> uh, the sister. The sister um, oh, from Florida. Virginia. She was the only one. I wasn't sympathetic to her at all. Well, I had hoped there were a there was a bit of redeeming quality in the end for Bertina. You know, I my heart goes out to women like her who started off life with um, with a lot of cards stacked against her. So you know, Faulkner says you have to love all of the fictional children. So that doesn't mean the reader has to. It just means the author has to. Well, what, what, one of the uh, characters has, uh, you know, he had been in the war and he's having a lot of kind of war memories and experiences. And, and did you, you know, do a lot of research for that? Did you have friends or people you knew that had that experience? How, how did you come up with that? Oh, it, it took a lot of research. I mean, I ended up even trying to email birders in Vietnam to ask if the crow pheasant was ever in the Mekong Delta or only in the <laughs> North Central Highlands. I know they thought it was enough. They never replied to me. Some woman in the forest in, in Tennessee. Uh, no, I was in Quebec then. Uh, yes, I did a lot of research, and um, I asked then a couple of uh, friends who were Vietnam veterans, one a medic, to read my manuscript and offer any advice. And I loved what he said to me. He said, you know, there is no one way to write about that war. Your version, even though you haven't been there, your imagination is as good as any other, anyone else's version. Don't worry about it. So I'm hoping that I pass. I, I really enjoyed that part of it. It was such a great balance to the whimsy of the, of the country life and then you have the hardships of war and it was told in such a gritty way. And I felt very much like uh, all of, a lot of your characters, they were trapped inside their own story. They had so many secrets, so many insecurities. But aren't we all like that in a way? I mean, I'm assuming we are anyway, and especially New Englanders, you know? You know, someone can say to you at a party, you know, I, or someone can say to you, you know, I was upset at something you said at Lorraine's party. And you're thinking, who the hell is Lorraine? And you find out it was a party like 10 years ago, you know, and they've carried that inside all this time. I'm, uh, New Englanders are a bit like that, I think. <laughs> I, I have a way off the wall question to ask you, and I, I noticed that, that in your kind of wonderful history and biography, you've written songs that have been recorded by major recording artists. I mean, how did you come to do that? And, and we don't want to ask you necessarily to sing a song for us here, but if you felt compelled to. Uh... Oh, good. No, I'm not compelled to sing a song. Okay. Um, I, I went to Nashville, Tennessee with the intentions of becoming a songwriter, and I would never consider myself a songwriter because I know so many professional songwriters, and I'm so in awe of the economy of words that they choose to do their craft. But I learned a lot from them about prose, and um, the, t the day came when I knew I had to either concentrate on fiction writing or learn to be a songwriter, so I chose fiction writing. But uh, the song that you're talking about, or the cuts that I have, have been co-written. Uh, and while I've written a couple of hundred songs on my own, so far none have been cut. 
So until that happens, I don't consider myself a professional songwriter. Those guys and, and women I know in Tennessee are amazing. Well, Kathy, thank you so much. I can see this on the stage. I can see your book on the stage. One set. It would be, it would be perfect. And, and this, this mailbox plays a very important part in the book. For the, the re, re, watchers, li, listeners, viewers that are seeing this now, remember the mailbox. So. And, <laughs> and thank you so much. And thank you for bringing your dog with you. Who's right there in the background? I see my dog, yes. <laughs> I rescue dogs from Tennessee. Thank Wonderful. you all so much. Bye. Thanks, Kathy.